My favorite thing in Pokemon has to be the moves. I love moves. The Pokemon themselves are alright, but don't get me wrong, I just don't think I'd like Charizard as much if he didn't breathe fire, you know? While the moves in Pokemon are pretty straightforward back in Gen 1, you know, flamethrower, thunderbolt, tackle, etc., modern moves tend to get a bit funky. Take for example Expanding Force, an 80 base power psychic move that will normally only hit one target, but if the floor gets a little bit wacky, all of a sudden you have the Face Melter 9000 on your hands. While the use cases for moves like this or older ones like Flamethrower are fairly obvious, there are some moves which are a lot less straightforward in application. A showdown category refers to these as usually useless moves. I was inspired to make this video because I was actually scrolling through this list and realized, wait a second, I do that. I use Leer. But not everyone knows that competitive Pokemon players actually use the moves on that list. So today let's discuss these usually useless moves and explain what makes them tick. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. Actually, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content like this for you to check out right after this one. So what are usually useless moves? These are moves which, in a casual playthrough, you'll probably see your Pokemon wants to learn, but you decide not to because they don't do any damage, or at least not as much as Draco Meteor would. These are also the moves that you might see on your Pokemon when you catch them, but you end up dropping them as soon as the opportunity reveals itself. I think a good place to start would have to be String Shot. Most of you might remember String Shot as that one move Caterpie knows that's going to turn into Gust at the first opportunity, but Game Freak did something really interesting with this. Seeing as String Shot is typically a move reserved for very weak early game bug types, they thought it would be pretty neat to buff the move in later generations to actually be kinda heat. Nowadays, it not only lowers the target's speed by two stages, but it actually hits both opponents and has nearly 100% accuracy, which means that any Pokemon carrying it can now instantly have the other side of the field's speed in a single turn, allowing a partner to follow up with a devastating attack. While niche, we tend to see it random basically any sort of viable bug type with the option to do it, like Charger Bug or occasionally Volcarona if it isn't going to go for Quiver Dance setups. It acts as sort of a lame bug type's last stand against being completely unnotable. Like if you see a Spide Ops and go, wow that thing has nothing going for it, you'll at some point scroll through its moves and go, oh hey maybe String Shot will work. It's sort of just charming. Speaking of which, Charm is actually just another niche option. Charm is a move which instantly cuts a single target's attack set in half. This move isn't seen too often in competition, but the applications are pretty numerous. Its most notable user is Whimsicott. This is due to Whimsicott's high speed and access to the ability Prankster. Prankster causes all non-damaging moves to gain plus one priority. This move saw its highest peak in usage back in 2022 with the restricted Dynamax format. Since Whimsicott itself was running up against major threats like Calyrex Ice, Zacian, and Groudon, it found itself running the move to help sustain its teammates while stuffing opponents' Dynamax turns. It's really hard for Chilling Nate Calyrex Ice under Trick Room to snowball and run away with the game when it can't pick up any KOs to begin with. And since Charm had priority, it meant that even with Trick Room active, a Whimsicott could take away Dynamax Sweeper's weakness policy boosts instantly. Whimsicott is actually sort of the arbiter of tech moves, as a lot of the moves in this video can reliably be ran on it. Beat Up is a pretty solid one that it's actually notorious for running. Normally, Beat Up is a very gimmicky move that hits once for every non-fainted Pokemon on the user's team. The base power of each hit is calculated by the attack stat of the Pokemon that it corresponds with. This typically has no impact on singles matches, but in doubles it does one thing and one thing alone. It activates really annoying Pokemon. Whimsicott runs beat up next to justified Pokemon like Terrakion to give them a plus one attack boost for every single hit, meaning that it gets to plus three and spams Rock Slide until the opponent snaps their switch in half. Another beat up strategy has to do with Mouse Hold and Annihilate. Annihilate has access to the signature move Rage Fist a move which increases in power by 50 every time a Pokemon hits Annihilate. So, Rage Fist goes from a 50 base power move to 200 instantly when Mousehold uses Beat Up on it. And the reason Mousehold is a really solid partner for Annihilate not only has to do with this move, but the fact that it's a normal type that has Follow Me to redirect Ghost moves and take no damage from it. Its ability Friend Guard also allows for Annihilate to passively take reduced damage from opponent's attacks. While we could use Whimsicott as an example for the next move, Encore is actually a pretty common move in doubles overall. This has mostly to do with the fact that Doubles has far more applications for non-damaging moves such as Protect or other support options like Follow Me. So if a faster Pokemon encores a Pokemon which had just protected, that Pokemon is effectively not a threat for the next three turns of the encore. Some notable users include Whimsicott, Iron Bundle, Alola Ninetales, and most notoriously of all, Screamtail. Screamtail isn't just a threat because of its access to Encore, but its ability to use it in conjunction with another usually useless move, Disable. 
Disable simply prevents the target from using the move that they had used last for 4 turns. Therefore, by encoring a target into a move and then disabling that move, Screamtail can force a Pokemon to struggle, hurting themselves for a few turns in a row. It's actually devastating and, frankly, kind of embarrassing, but you can't argue with the results here. While these Pokemon are fast on their own, some Pokemon do need a bit of help. Luckily, we now have the move after you. Now, I had no idea how this move worked for the longest time because my Pokemon would learn it, I would try to use it, and nothing would happen. The opposing Poochiana would just growl at me. But as it turns out, this is an explicitly doubles-oriented move. After you allows for the target to make its move during the user's turn. This is not to be confused with me first, which is actually just a useless move, as it makes you use whatever move the target was going to use before they can. Yeah, I, I mean, cool, I really love being able to click double edge with no stab, that's, that's awesome. After you is most commonly seen on the Pokemon Lilligant. This is because Lilligant pairs excellently with the Pokemon Torkoal. Basically, Torkoal's ability Drought sets up the sun, Lilligant's ability Chlorophyll doubles its already high speed, then Lilligant uses after you, and Torkoal gets to nuke the opposing side of the field with a sun boost in eruption. Or you can just break your opponent's ankles and go for the Sleep Powder instead. It's about as annoying as a 50-50 can get. So much so that it led to the rise of another usually useless move. Arcanine in 2017 would occasionally run the Safety Goggles and Safeguard. Safeguard is a move which protects the entire user's side of the field from getting status for 5 turns. As a way to make the Lily Cole matchup more tolerable, Arcanine would set up Safeguard to prevent Sleep Powder from being used on its teammates. This was fairly safe as with the Goggles, Arcanine itself couldn't be slept and its fire typing meant that it resisted both Eruption and Leaf Storm. But we did see other Pokemon occasionally run this move, like Clefairy, which is able to sometimes underspeed Amoongus and prevent its partners from being slept in Trick Room by letting them move first. Another move which Clefairy has access to is Gravity. This is one of the most confusing moves in the game to learn all the mechanics about, because almost none of them are explained. Gravity is a move which allows for all Pokemon who are not touching the ground via Levitate, Flying-type, Air Balloon, whatever, to be hit by ground moves. More importantly, it increases the accuracy of all moves by 1.67 times. So by combining gravity with hypnosis, you now have a 100% accurate sleep move, which grass types aren't immune to. Beyond that, it was occasionally run on Pokemon like Dusclops to combine with Groudon. This would make it so Groudon's Precipice Blades were 100% accurate and would now be able to hit the likes of Thunderous, Tornadus, Cresselia, or any other formerly immune Pokemon. This was originally seen as sort of a gimmick, but as time has gone on, it's a lot more respected, even if it's a bit cheesy and annoying. But not all gimmicks are run by weaker Pokemon like Clefairy. Some are run by top tiers. Take for example, Scarf Soak Tapu Fini. Now Soak is a move which turns the target into a pure water type. Players in 2017 and 2018 would pair Scarf Soak Tapu Fini with Pokemon like Tapu Koko and Kartana to turn Pokemon like Arcanine and Incineroar, who normally resist these grass moves, into water types, then KO them with a follow-up with Kartana's Leaf Blade. Tapu Koko was also able to follow up with this as it's a fast and powerful electric mon with electric terrain boosted moves. While this strategy did have some deep tournament runs, it was overall very niche, unlike the next gimmick. I've covered this one like a million times, but it's still worth mentioning as a lot of casual fans don't know about this use for copycat. But in Generation 8, Pokemon like Liopard and Riolu were used due to their access to prankster boosted copycat. By pairing these Pokemon with a Dynamax Pokemon who knew Trick Room, it was possible to set up Trick Room with plus one priority. If a Dynamax Pokemon had a non-damaging move, they'd all be turned into the move Max Guard, or as I call it, Big Protect. However, by using Max Guard corresponding with Trick Room, a partner Pokemon with Copycat would copy the move, setting up Trick Room instantly. You may ask why this is better than just setting it up normally, since you can't really attack on that first turn of Trick Room at all. And this is simply because in Dynamax, you don't need all of your Trick Room turns to run away with the game. Reliably getting it set up was well worth it over risking not getting it up at all. You had a solid chance to remove a key piece of your opponent's team within the remaining turns and then run away with the game. Before we start this section, I actually just found out that Rattata doesn't actually learn Leer, but that thumbnail goes really hard so we'll just roll with it. Yeah, Leer is a move which you would typically remove from your moveset as soon as you realize it doesn't do damage. Lower defense? Why wouldn't I just attack twice? It does more damage. Lame. Goodbye. But recently, Leer was actually buffed to have this effect on both opponents in double battles. The only real users of Leer are the forces of nature, specifically Tornadus and Thunderous. By combining Prankster Leer with a powerful physical attacker, you can cheekily pick up a KO against Pokemon which would typically survive the move. And the fact that it hits both opponents means that it can lead to a game snowballing in the user's favor pretty easily. I actually used this to make top 18 at Knoxville Regionals just a few weeks ago by combining Leer Tornadus with Wicked Blow Urshifu. 
Because Wicked Blow ignores any Intimidate drops Urshifu might have, I was actually able to combo the move to pick up one-shots against Pokemon like Ogre Pond Wellspring, which would usually survive the hit. But this niche move has popped up from time to time on other teams. Yet another move which was buffed to target two Pokemon is Howl. In Gen 3, Howl was basically just bad swords dance, because it only boosted the user's attack stat by one stage. But since Generation 8, Howl has been buffed to boost both the user and partner's attack stats. Combining a fast physical support Pokemon like Gouging Fire with another strong attacker like King Gambit has become one of the most successful archetypes in modern VGC. Since partner King Gambit carry Defiant, the opponent is unlikely to go for an Intimidate into the Gouging Fire or King Gambit, as it would just result in that King Gambit getting yet another attack boost. This works as sort of a permanent helping hand for physical attackers that makes it difficult for the opposing Pokemon to play around, as even resisted hits will start to score one or two hit KOs. Okay, let's finish things off with a little bit of a speed round because the last four moves are more or less one-off use cases that people discovered for usually useless moves. Uproar is typically a weak normal move which Wizmer would spam at you while you try to save a Wingle for a lonely old sailor, but recently some Ferrigraph would run it as a tech move on safety goggle sets to prevent opposing Amoongus from stopping a Trick Room sweep. Uproar might just be a 90 base power move which locks the user in for a few turns, but another effect it has is to wake up all Pokemon and prevent any of them from falling asleep for the duration of the move. Since Amoongus typically underspeeds most other Trick Room Pokemon, Ferrigraph can click this to wake up a partner Pokemon like Blood Moon or Saluna and start dishing out major damage despite the Mushroom's presence. Bind was used by Nick Navarre on his Dusclops in the Players Cup tournament to trap Pokemon in while dealing passive damage. Along with Yawn on Torkoal, it was able to prevent switches, forcing things to fall asleep. It can also prevent defensive switches into Pokemon like Incineroar, which would intimidate his Glacier. And our final two are both Z-Move variants, which cause useless moves to see some niche usage. Conversion normally just changes the user's type into the type of move in their first move slot. Porygon Z in Generation 7 would combine Z-Conversion with Blizzard in the first slot to not only become an Ice type, boosting the power of Blizzard with adaptability, but it would also provide an Omni boost, granting it a huge increase in bulk, speed, and power. By having an Alolan Ninetales on the field to set up Hail, Porygon Z could dish out major reliable damage and sweep entire teams with just Blizzard. Finally, Splash is Splash. It has a long history of literally doing nothing, I'm not kidding the text in the game explains that the move has no use. Despite this, I spent hours as a child trying to figure out what it was supposed to do, I even tricked myself into thinking that it made Magikarp evolve faster and I definitely told some kids in the playground that that was the truth. Little did I know that years later, the Z variant of the move would cause the user to gain plus 3 in their attack stat instantly, leading to the likes of Z Splash Gyarados or even Z Splash Solgaleo to pop up from time to time as sort of a gag. But that's it on usually useless moves. Are there any that I missed? Or do you have any questions about a move that you think might be useless? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you enjoyed, please like the vid. It'd mean the world to me if you would subscribe because I'm trying to reach 200,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Thanks to all my Patreons and YouTube channel members for supporting my work. If you want to see bonus content each week as well as get sneak peeks at future videos, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the description down below or click the join button below the video. And a special thank you to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Kanor, Halo, Jordan Harridge, and Narwiz for their generous pledges. You should see a playlist on screen right now full of videos just like this for you to check out, and I'd really appreciate if you would do that for me. But with that, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!